What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Hops Geek News, your home for comic books, movies, TV shows, and of course, we typically feature a beer of the week. I'm Matt. With me, as always, is Lauren, and today starts our adventures in Europe, so there is no news, all that kind of stuff. We're talking Deadpool. We're going to remind you about the last two movies of Deadpool, and we're going to give you some comic book origin, because on the horizon is Deadpool and Wolverine releasing in theaters very, very soon, like the 25th of July. We finally made it, folks. We are here. The only Marvel movie we get, the return of Hugh Jackman in all his beautiful, handsome, muscular glory in that yellow suit. And uh, I know Lauren's excited. I'm excited. We're actually going to get to watch that movie together. So stay tuned for some post theater reactions as we will be watching it together in London. And as always, like, subscribe, share, follow, hit the subscribe button, get notifications when we go live for Cantina Hours, when we get any new episodes up there, whether it's Spotify, Apple, drop a review, leave a five-star rating. And uh, we do all your stuff on YouTube as well. And, uh, and typically we do news and what we've been reading or watching. However, we are not doing that as we stack some episodes ahead of time because we are not in the country at the moment. So to give you what I'm drinking real quick before we dive into Deadpool is Lauren and I chose a good beer for this episode. How could we describe Deadpool other than the goat and that right there is what we are drinking. Mosaic Goat from Two Silos Brewing. It is a hazy double IPA coming in at 8.5%. This hazy double IPA was crafted to showcase a sticky blend of cashmere, El Dorado, and mosaic hops. Double dry hop to enhance the already pungent aromas. Taste a balance of overripe tropical fruit, citrus, and stone fruit with slightly sweet finish. It is wicked juicy. It's really good. And uh, like I said, we chose this because Deadpool and Ryan Reynolds are kind of the goat of uh, making all this happen. Number one, he's bringing back Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. Number two, he, Ryan Reynolds got it, you know, Deadpool made and, and it, it really did carry the Fox universe. And now we're going to see what happens. Maybe Deadpool kills the, the Fox Marvel universe, whatever it may be. So Lauren, hey, sorry, hey. as she's... I was eating, eating a chicken sandwich. Oh, yes, your chimichangas. Well, why don't you go ahead? And uh, I know you're we're drinking the same thing. So why don't you kick us off? Give us some maximum effort. And uh, let's dive into some Deadpool. Why don't we? Yes. So the first one came out in 2016, starring Ryan Reynolds, Marina Baccarin, Brianna Hildebrand, and more. So because X-Men Days of Future Past happened, you can argue that this new timeline in regards to Deadpool is, or you can argue this is a completely new timeline. And next week's episode, we will get into that a little bit further and recap all those movies, like Matt was just saying. But basically, Deadpool didn't actually need to kill his Wolverine origin self because that may not have even happened. Yeah. Especially because we see Weapon X in Phoenix, which means Wolverine probably didn't escape the day he was pumped full of adamantium. Again, stay tuned. So the recap for the first movie, uh, we do have movie fun facts too, which I had to stop because there was too many movie fun facts. But of course, you know, some of them listed are just Easter eggs, but yeah. Easter eggs in a normal movie are fun facts where in this movie, it's, you know, these movies. Well, I didn't great. realize this movie came out in 2016. It felt like it was sooner than that, I guess. But yeah, this one first came out in 2016 after he leaked the test footage of De it was Ryan. Come on. It was Ryan Reynolds who leaked himself in the suit, the whole test footage which <laughs> finally, because they're like, no one's going to want to see that. And he did it. And then, or somebody did it. And all of a sudden everybody's clamoring for this movie and it finally gets made in such a clever, clever manner. Right. I remember I actually convinced two of my friends to go with me that aren't big Marvel fans was Erica and Jessica. And uh, we went to Cooper talk first and they was wine day. So we got wine and then we went over oh. to the movie theater and they're like, well, if Ryan Reynolds is in it, I'll see it. And I'm like, they're going to be real upset when they see what he looks like in this. And then they're like, yeah, he's in it. And then oof. they heard it was, he gets naked. I'm like, yeah, he's naked. I'm like, cause you do see you, you, do you know, see you naked. technically weren't telling a lie. Yeah. Well, I kind of wanted to curb their expectations too. And I'm like, well, I don't know how much you'll see. But, you know, I, I mean, he's he's at least attractive at the beginning of this movie. Ha, you fell for the oldest trick in the book. <laughs> but, I mean, they both enjoyed it. And it's, you know, it's funny even if you don't know all of the backstory. It's just so much more. It's funnier if you do oh, know yeah. everything. Like, obviously, I was laughing more way more, way more than they were. So yeah. here's your recap for the first movie uh, to refresh your recollection. So Deadpool is a loving mercenary with a heart of gold, even though he won't admit it. He falls in love with Vanessa, and they are big on celebrating holidays together. They just love holidays so much. They After do. some time together, they learn that Wade is dying of cancer and has spread everywhere. 
So by chance, a random guy from the Matrix shows up and offers him an opportunity at some experimental treatment. At first, of course, he says no, but it can't. he can't stand to see Vanessa watching him die. So instead, he dips out without even saying goodbye and heads to get experimental cancer treatment, or so that's what he thinks. Where's Francis? It turns out a guy named Ajax, really named Francis Freeman, shares my last name, is supporting <sighs> people to see if it mutant gene so he can then sell them as mutant slaves it works on wade his mutant gene is unlocked however it is at the sacrifice of his pretty face he manages to escape and burns the place to the ground he's then on a mission to find francis right here's francis beautiful again turns out that was complete bullshit so deadpool just but vanessa is okay with his ugly mug and they live happily ever after until the beginning of deadpool 2 ah yes well, some fun facts that we have there. Through the Make-A-Wish Foundation, 13-year-old Connor McGrath, a terminally ill fan from Edmonton, requested to attend the special event for Deadpool in January, which turned out to be one of the two special screenings in New York and Los Angeles for the fans. He couldn't make it due to the severity of his illness, so Ryan Reynolds heard about his story, traveled to Edmonton, and surprised him with a private special screening of the film. Reynolds said the boy was the first person ever to see the film. They kept in touch until Connor's passing a few months later. Reynolds pays tribute to him on his social media pages. Uh, dude, I love stories like that. I, I mean, okay, rephrase. I don't love that somebody passed away. Yeah, or, yeah I no, I understand. Yet. But it's really cool when like, you know, hey, I, I, we, they do hear you and things and they get to have that moment. Um, it's just yeah. something special for the fans. So I always love when people like, John Cena, Ryan Reynolds, like they're really good to the fans and try to do their best for the fans. Uh, it's, it's it's heartwarming, man. Now, from that point, Dopinder was actually the name of a friend of Ryan's who died as a kid. My God, are any of these fun facts not depressing? <laughs> I'm sorry. The next one This is. was a way to honor him. Now, hopefully, in, in the arcade, you can see a stuffed dog dressed as Deadpool. This is actually a nod to Dogpool, who has been seen in the recent Deadpool and Wolverine trailers. However, Lauren checked it out for herself, and it kind of seems like a bit of a stretched. It's a stuffed black and red dog. Could have been one of those things that... I feel like it could have been Clifford, honestly. But I mean, like, the mask looked like it was black. Like, his head was black and red. So I don't know. Oh, that could have been... Yeah, I guess maybe. It could have been. But, I mean, if you had told me it was Clifford the big red dog with something black on his face, I'd have been like, oh, okay. (laughs) <laughs> now, when Fox refused to pay the writers for the film, Rhett, Reese, and Paul Warrick were on set for input. Ryan Reynolds paid out of his own pocket for them to be on set to look over the film. Ryan Reynolds' full body makeup took eight hours to apply. Once it was on, he was not able to sit down or lie down. I can't even imagine, you know, sitting there for eight hours. And then after that, you got to film like that's that's exhausting. Uh, so I know. You might, you God. Like with Drax and everybody, I always feel like. Drax and Gamora have to be like jealous of like Star Lord. Like you don't have to. Oh like- yeah, like you see, imagine somebody like Star Lord who just. I mean, well, everybody's got to work out. Screw that. Yeah, Star Lord just gets to show up and throw a jacket and some pants on. Meanwhile, like they're sitting in yeah. this makeup for how or like Josh Brolin who gets CGI'd. You know, and it's just, yeah, it's crazy. I don't know. It is nuts. Couple more fun facts for you. On April Fool's Day in 2015, Ryan Reynolds posted on Twitter that the film would be rated PG 13. I don't remember this. Good. I do too. Fan hilarious. backlash. As the Deadpool character often swears and commits act of graphic violence. Later that day, Ryan Reynolds confirmed that it was just a prank in the film. Right. Guys, it's April Fool's Day. So, like, I didn't believe that for a second because of the day it is. Like, geez. I hate April Fool's so much because I, I believe too, everything. I believe all uh, of it. I mean, Deadpool shows up in the, the cartoons. So I could see them doing a spin on that, but I knew that Ryan Reynolds was going to fight for it. And if you think, you know, like you start Deadpool 2, the first line is, fuck Wolverine. First he yeah. rides my coattails with the R rating, and then he ups the ante and dies. But I, I do think he followed his coattails. I don't think that Fox would have okay to rated our movie. And I was, oh my God, I was watching that one this morning. It's so freaking good. It is. Man. We'll get to, uh, before we go to Deadpool 2, right. talk about some of our I'm favorite moments. About Logan. Yeah. No, <laughs> you're good. Uh, the opening credits was originally a placeholder. However, Tim Miller found the parody titles funny enough to put him in the movie. And last but certainly not least, Deadpool forgot his bag of guns because Fox cut the budget last minute and they couldn't afford to add special effects, which is perhaps my favorite one. I heard that when it, like this whole thing came out and they're like, yeah, I think this is what happened. Yeah, it's dead ass I hilarious. I double checked it on multiple websites until I found one. I was like, okay, I don't think that they would they would lie. Because I kind of thought that might be like the, the Binks cat is the same one as Sabrina the Teenage Witch, which turned out is probably BS. But it's on a lot of websites, but I think that one sounds like it was. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, the, the dude, this movie's so good. I did see it in theaters. Um, 
the guy who plays Ajax or Francis, he was in Deadpool actually, or Deadpool. Of course he was. He House was in of, uh, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. The, yes. He was the first iteration of, I forget the name, but Khaleesi's little boyfriend there. And then they, Ed Screen is his name. And yeah, then, and then they replace him with somebody who doesn't even look like him. Yeah. I don't really understand that, but he's a great actor. He's in Midway. He's in some other things. I like him as an actor. Uh, yeah. I thought the fight sequences in this movie were really good. It was bloody. It was really funny how like, the humor. I mean, Ryan Reynolds captured uh, the fourth wall breaking. I thought T Negasonic, Teenage Warhead, and Colossus were freaking amazing. He's like, are the rest of the X Men in there? Oh, we couldn't afford them. Like stuff like that was absolutely incredible. Uh, and then you know that big fight scene kind of on the ship at the end, and what's her name, Gina Carano? Oh, Ugh, it's on the helicarrier. That's what it is. Yeah, the helicarrier. Yeah. That was like the first. Like, oh, is this you know going to be in the MCU? And of course, not yet, but. Yeah. So freaking crazy. It's so crazy. Okay. I'm still like on cloud nine about the fact that this is happening. I need to put my sweater back on. I know. Um, I hear okay. I'll take us before you give us the fun facts for Deadpool two while you put your sweater on. I'll give us a movie recap of our Deadpool two real quick. Now, Josh Brolin plays cable in this one. Now, Deadpool is just working the old nine to five killing the bad guys, getting ready to start a family with Vanessa. When she is suddenly murdered, Wade goes into a bout of depression and ends up at the X Mansion. He then goes on a mission with them as a trainee because Russell is lighting his mutant orphanage up. However, side note, the mutant orphanage is the Essex House for Mutant Rehabilitation. Nathan Exis Essex is actually sinister. Fun fact. Deadpool learns they are hurting Russell, so he starts killing. And then both him and Russell get mutant dampening collars and sent to prison. Cable accidentally busts Deadpool out while trying to kill Russell. Deadpool then puts together X-Force to save Russell from Cable, which includes, obviously, Brad Pitt with a very hilarious sequence of events. In the future, Russell kills Cable's wife and kid, so he's trying to prevent that. But Deadpool emphasizes that not letting Russell get his first kill will prevent that, or emphasizes, not, you know, my bad. Deadpool is right. Then Pinkie Pie and Negasonic Teenage Warhead fix Cable's time-traveling device and give it to Wade, who then kills himself in Wolverine Origins. Kills Ryan Reynolds before you become Green Lantern and saves Vanessa and the X Force. Run credits. Now enter the TVA. Yes. Take us away for the fun facts. Okay. So uh, this movie, actually, I convinced Erica and Ski and Josh to go see this after we had been drinking all day. And Ski had never seen a Marvel movie ever. So that was his first Marvel movie. I think he too funny. Asleep. Oh, come so, on, man. Deadpool 2 came out in 2018. Wade is actually wearing a shirt that says Olivia and Meredith, best friends per ever with two cats on them. Those cats are actually Taylor Swift's. He had to get special permission to put those cats on the shirt. Now they're all besties, uh, though. Yep. Uh, so the Brad Pitt Vanisher cameo. Uh, so how that came to be was the director, David Leach, Litch, and Ryan pitched the idea of him being Cable, but it didn't really work with Pitt's schedule, and he was a little hesitant about it. So they pitched him the idea of Vanisher, and Pitt said, why not? So uh, he said it was the easiest job he's ever done. Uh, and I mean, some of the extra, so the guy that's the director, David, was actually had been Brad Pitt's stunt double in the past. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I think is interesting, though, is like you see Vanisher's uh, shoot on him. Yep. But then when he's getting electrocuted, it doesn't look like he's naked. So why are his clothes invisible? I bet he's naked under those clothes, that little slut. We should have had a naked Vanisher is all I'm saying. Uh, so know. the scene where you see the other X-Men shut the door, that was actually shot on the set of Dark Phoenix, and then they sent it over to Deadpool 2. Deadpool complains about Domino's powers. He says that must have been the idea of an artist who can't even draw feet. Rob Liefeld, who created both of them, is very well known for not being able to draw feet. Well, we even saw not oh, that in God. the trailer. You can't draw Captain America's chest very well either. So you remember when Cable shows up and there's two rednecks talking about wiping their ass? Yes. So I'm looking at the one guy and I'm like, it looks like he's wearing a pregnancy belly. That can't be his real belly. Well, it wasn't. It was Matt Damon no, wearing it was a belly. Matt Damon. Yeah, man. You didn't know that. I think I had heard that a while ago and I didn't remember. So now Matt Damon is also in the MCU twice. Twice. <laughs> he's yes. A he's he's and an playing. Yeah, I was going to say he, he's in the Loki play. <laughs> Uh, and Alan cameos, Tudyk man. is the other one, and I believe that's the pirate. That's everyone's favorite. Yes, pirate. that's a uh, yeah, Steve. Arr, arr, so Cable's gun actually weighed seventy pounds. Wow. Uh, Rob Liefeld was on set, and he asked if he could hold it, and he's like, "It's really heavy," and it was very heavy. 
So to promote the movie, 20th Century Fox recreated Blu-ray covers for uh, 16 popular Fox movies with Deadpool appearing as the lead character. Um, Some of them were Terminator, Predator, and Fight Club. And these were for sale throughout Walmart. I think it's kind of funny because like Disney did that with Stitch years ago. Yeah. They didn't put it on the the covers, but I remember seeing like, you know, Ariel singing and then Stitch shows up or like Stitch like, you know, interrupted all these things. Mm Mm-hmm. But so, I mean, I thought that was cute. So Zeitgeist can be seen with a number 116 tattooed on his left shoulder. This is actually a reference to the only comic book he ever appeared in, X-Force 116. And my last fun fact for here is Ryan Reynolds stole the dead Logan music box, which I feel like they should sell that. They probably have it on Etsy or something. But like, I would I would buy that. Of course you would. What's your last? The last fun fact is Korg and Deadpool team up to review the trailer for free guy together. So Deadpool and Wolverine is not the first MCU Fox Marvel crossover. Deadpool even asks Korg for advice on how to get into the MCU. Did you ever watch that? Yeah, I did. It was, it was, it was cool, man. Yeah. Cause uh, Taika Waititi is Korg. So obviously they did free guy together. Yeah. yeah. Good movie. Uh, So those are kind of the movies uh, I really enjoyed, you know, juggernaut showing back up in Deadpool too. That was great. Cause they, he was massive and, it wasn't the Vinnie Jones juggernaut that we, I'm the juggernaut bitch. It was, like, I know I always, anytime I hear juggernaut, I want to say bitch. I do too. I do too. But the, like the fight was awesome. He gets ripped apart. I thought Josh Brolin as cable is actually really, really awesome. So, I mean, he kind of plays two characters, it, you know, Thanos and cable. So that was really cool. When um, he calls Thanos. Yes. Yeah. Uh, more of the fourth wall breaking there. They got a little bit bigger budget in this movie. Uh, I didn't really care for Russell at all, but Russell goes on. He's been in some other movies since then. Oh my obviously. God. He was, he, I didn't mind him in this, but he was terrible in Christmas Chronicles too. That's what it was. Christmas. Terrible. Chronicles. That's right. That's what it was. No I was, I was like, kid, but you should play a villain. Not I didn't even movie. really love him in this movie, but you know, uh, is what it is. I, I, I liked this movie. I didn't love it obviously as much as the first one. I felt it was kind of weaker, uh, but I mean, come on, man, it's still a good movie at the end of the day. And I'm really, really excited to, uh, Deadpool Wolverine's going to freaking make a billion dollars opening day. So both of these are so good. Like just rewatching them. And I've, I've been rewatching all these movies completely out of order in like increments. Cause like Josh will have one on, or I'll be watching yeah. or like days of future past was on HBO and I started <laughs> it and then left for Pennsylvania, came back and it was gone. And that now it's on Disney plus. So I just finished it on the treadmill <laughs> today and then started Logan. So when I actually map out my notes for next week, it will, it will make more sense in my own head then because I've been watching these out of order. Um, right. But these two Deadpool movies. I'm going to watch them all on the plane together. to Barcelona, honestly, because I have <laughs> hours and I don't sleep very well on planes. So Oh, well, Bye. now let's get into some Deadpool comic fun facts to prepare you for the film. Wade Wilson, a.k.a. Deadpool, a.k.a. The Merc with the Mouth. His first appearance was in 1991 in New Mutants issue number 98. In this story, he was a mercenary looking for Cable. The New Mutants stopped him and then mailed him back to his employer, Tulliver. He was obviously, like we talked about, created by Rob Liefeld and Fabian Oh, gosh, I can never pronounce his name. Nichiza? Nichiza? I don't remember. Man, sorry, I apologize, Fabian. He has healing abilities, which are cons- constantly fighting his cancer. He is also highly trained in fighting. He was a U.S. Army Special Forces. However, he got dishonorably discharged in the comics. And they do mention that in the first movie, too, that he's like, did you really, you know, Francis says, that, did you really think we were going to do that? You were dishonorably discharged. You thought this yeah. was a government run program? Come on, man. In the comics, he's not a full on mutant. He's like a mutate. He gets his powers by volunteering at the Weapon X program and having Wolverine's healing DNA put in him so he could actually fight the cancer, which explains why he loves Wolverine so much. This did, however, leave him with mental scars that will not heal as there was a lot of experimentation done. It really does. Uh, So I'm curious if they're going to like allude to that at all. Is there a universe where this happens? I wonder in this new movie coming out, how is that going to blend in? I wonder. I mean, that, they could have done that. That's a very good possibility that, like, Francis did that and didn't tell him. Oh. But, but I, I I don't think they will. I think they're going to keep Deadpool consistent and can- canine canon to the first two well, movies. Th- yeah. So where he had to be put under pressure to have his, you know, suppressed mutant <laughs> gene revealed. And I actually kind of like that. I, I feel like, you know, I maybe like Vanessa and, and Deadpool's kid would have been naturally a mutant. And he was mm-hmm. just a carrier that they, you know, pulled it out. I thought that was kind of a cool and it, it makes sense too as far as it being a mutation that it would be life saving if you're put under extreme duress 
No, I, I, I agree. And it's also like one of those things in that scene where he's getting the oxygen taken out. It's also one of those that like you naturally want to hold your breath as well. Cause I don't know. It's just one of those uh, natural human react for me. Yeah. You're like, you're, you're like, oh, I'm breathing. My chest is heavy. Cause it, asphy asphyxiation is one of those things I don't ever want to do, but I think no. you're right. Uh, we'll, we'll get to kind of some predictions here soon. We're not going to fully go down the comic book rabbit hole. So here's some more comic book random fun facts. Deadpool loves chimichangas, which spurred from an SNL skit that the creators loved where a bunch of white people were over pronouncing Spanish words in the most Spanish ways possible. This includes Dana Carvey, Mike Myers, Phil Hartman, and Jimmy Smits was the guest star. Better known as Bail Organa. So I actually found yeah. this skit because I wanted to, to why well, I had never seen it. And it is quite hilarious. Yeah. They're like Nicaragua. And then they're like, oh, for, for lunch, we're going to have enchiladas. And like they say chimichangas at one point. So they're in like, you know, obviously Bail Organa or Jimmy Smith is Hispanic. And so he's like, what are they doing? Why are they doing this? But I mean, my husband makes fun of me whenever I order platanos because I always say platanos maduros. And he's like, you're white. Why are you saying it like that? So I always I tell, like, I'm like, dude, I'm a white. I don't know what <laughs> uh, we go to this Mexican restaurant around here sometimes called Los Compadres. And uh, my friend, you know, Lozano, he's one of my guys at work. He is always in our chats on Cantina Hours. And he just orders everything because he speaks Spanish and the, the waiters do too. So he just, what do you want? All right. And he speaks because me, I can't pronounce. And dude, you see how bad my pronunciation is. Yeah, but they don't here. expect you to. I mean, I don't pronounce. But I, I know, but I'm like, dude, I'm like, but it's just it, funny. So. He's like, what do you want? The, the birria? All right. And then he like goes, I'm just like, thank God for you. Uh, because I, but it's just one of those funny things. But I, I love old school SNL. This is one of those like Dan and Carvey, Mike Myers, and then like Will Ferrell, like all the old skits, Adam Sandler. Uh, these are all like the classics. I don't, I can't even think of any real modern day SNL skits that I like love, but the, all the old school I man. still love Weekend Update. If you ever like, sometimes I will still like catch it on real. Oh, or, Colin and Michael Che. I do like, yes. Michael and Michael che. I, I do like, they, I like when they, they like, like jokes for each other. Jokes for each other. Yeah. So they did one recently with Scarlett Johansson and like some Michael Che. People were mad about that. Obviously, they were mad about the Scarlett Johansson one. Some people are like, life. why would he not shut that down? He's talking bad about his wife. No, he's not. He's making a joke, and I feel like well, she probably didn't care. I SNL. mean, he probably they probably That's the cleared whole point it of with that her. Segment is, I'm sure. Yeah, well, yeah, well, maybe Michael. Chayden. I have a feeling he they probably. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He, before, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Michael is probably. Like, hey, Scarlett, is this okay? I'm sure, but I'm just. But that's I'm the just, whole man. point. They're trying to get around being able to Look, write. A, you know, I know. Make a that's the whole point, man. It's yeah. comedy. I think um, it's people, funny. people are upset. I don't know. And um, it's fun to watch. Uh, watch him squ like Colin squirms way more than Michael Che. Oh, he but it's fun does. to watch. Well, Colin cause Michael Che there. obviously writes like the racial he goes jokes. full force. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, dude, it's, it's good. But why don't you want take us, take us yeah. some more of these fun facts about Deadpool's comic book origin. Um, okay. So, uh, Deadpool has been a mercenary for many people, including Kingpin. Uh, he was once a pirate. So that's fun. A teleportation. You mean I can dress as Deadpool on the pirate night at the Mickey boat. Cause he's technically in the MCU now. I didn't even think of that. I actually have I just a shirt about that. that's Thor in uh, Infinity War, and it says Angel pi or Pirate Angel, because when they say he looks like an angel, he's a pirate, he's a pirate angel. <laughs> I made that one for the Marvel cruise, and I don't think anybody I was with got the joke. Okay, so a teleportation accident once occurred that caused Cable and Deadpool not to be able to teleport without each other. So this caused them to be very combatant with each other, but then they became friends, much like in Deadpool 2. So he once sacrificed his life to return symbiote infected dinosaurs back to Savage Land. Uh, he did come back from the dead, obviously. So this instantly, like, there's a symbiote and there's a venom dinosaur in a venom oh, T Rex man. in Old Man Logan. So that's where my head went right there. Like I didn't know they had that in the Savage Land. None of the Savage Land stuff I've read has had symbiotes. So that's fun. Yeah. Uh, he once fought a doppelganger made out of his own cut off body parts. That's some. I would love to see that on the big screen. He was once in a love triangle with Thanos and death. This was actually in the infinity gauntlet series. So I think a lot oh, of people yeah. have read this uh, Deadpool and death were more of like a couple and Thanos was in love with her. That's why he got the infinity stones and snapped away half the universe to try to impress her. I saw somebody at Megacon a couple years ago, they were dressed as death and Deadpool. And I thought that was so see cute. that's clever versus like the traditional, uh, here we go again. It's 18 different Deadpools all meeting up, pointing at each other. I love it. Oh, that's why I did my glass tonight. I have the Spider-Man, the three Spider-Man pointing at each other. Um, I have that shirt over here I was going to wear for our 4th of July stuff. Ah. I, I actually saw a Jack Skellington one 
once and I took a picture with him That's and he cool. let me hold his unicorn. <laughs> like, do That's I pretty cool. Touch I'll give I'll, like the clever ones. I like the clever ones. I like, cause they're deep cuts more often than not. Cause Deadpool, there's so many different variants of Deadpool. I mean, we're getting the Deadpool puppy in Deadpool and Wolverine even. Yeah. We're getting dog pool. So wonder man, which I believe we're getting a wonder man. We are, we are. Now. Okay. So he was yep. once trapped inside rogue's mind while helping her defeat a celestial. Later on, Rogue kissed Deadpool in this released Wonder Man. I don't know why, but it did. Yeah, that's interesting. In the run the few years ago uh, in Secret Empire where we all heard, you know, Captain America said a Hail Hydra and people were losing their minds. So Deadpool had actually teamed up with Captain America in that story. And he was very sad when he found out it wasn't the real Captain America because he thought he was like going to be a hero. And during this run, Deadpool actually killed Agent Coulson, who did not show up in the comics until after Iron Man. And he did this for the evil oh. cat. Deadpool doesn't remember his childhood, but apparently he actually did have parents who loved him and even like had his room in the exact same condition he had left it in because they were hoping he would come back one day. Uh, but sadly, he actually killed them because he was hired to. Oh. And my last bit of fun fact. So Deadpool had to form a team at one po point called the Deadpool Corps once. And they did this to save the multiverse. So this team of Deadpools was from alternate universes and they were founded by Earth's 616 Deadpool or 616 Deadpool. And I'm wondering if this will be to, to bleed into. I was, you're reading games. my mind. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, cause we know we're going to have dog pool. We know we're going to have Deadpool and we know we saw lady pool. That's so what that's I, yeah. Three right there. I think that's what I was just about to say, uh, because so this was essentially, he was chosen by the contemplator in stopping a cosmic entity known as the awareness that discover or devours the multiverse's consciousness in truth the deadpool core real power to stop the entity is their unique mind that ultimately made them absolute immune to the entity now i, I love fully that. agree that this might be where the movie's going because we don't know who lady deadpool is yet some people have said it's taylor i don't i think it's some Blake people think it's Blake. or vanessa it's gonna either be vanessa or oh. Blake lively those, vanessa, those are i do believe is a superhero in the comics Probably. She uh, is so, somebody here. I'll Google that real quick. I, I do think that's going to happen. I mean, of course, so we've got three right there. And then you've got, obviously, Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. So I think we're going to get some version of the Deadpool core. There's probably going to be like a montage scene because a lot of this movie looks like it takes place in the Fox universe or the, the, the No Man's Land, essentially, whatever it is, of the multiverse. And there's incursions. We got the TVA comes into play at a point. Uh, there's a lot of old X-Men bad guys, Lady Deathstrike. Some of the other ones are making appearance in the trailers that we've seen. And then somehow this is going to bleed like Deadpool's going to end up in the MCU. I don't necessarily obviously think Hugh Jackman, but I do think we're going to potentially see our MCU version of Wolverine. I really feel like that's they're teasing that just to get a reaction somehow, which is patch like maybe I don't know. Yeah. Um, so Vanessa is in the comics. She's copycat, which is kind of like a mystique where she can shape shift into anybody. Mm, right, right. So, yeah, Vanessa Carly style. So Vanessa does have a romantic history with Wade Wilson in the Deadpool comics. Uh, I don't know how many Wolverines we're going to get. I don't know how many Hugh Jackman Wolverines we're going to get. I'm going. I, I don't I don't know. I have mixed feelings on variant Wolverines. And like some people have said, like, that might not be Hugh Jackman as Patch because we only saw Patch from behind. Uh, I really hope it is Hugh Jackman. I don't think I it is. Really I cool. really don't think it is. I also like whoever it is, they're on Madripoor. They have to be because that's the only time like Deadpool yeah. really uses. I think there's been or uh, Wolverine really does patch. I think there have been other times where he's like, like at an auction or something like that, where he'll be like, you know, let me dress this patch. Even though it's not very subtle, we can still see your hair. You're not doing your hair any other way. And you're still very like much so stick out with being. This, we like, know who you are, man. Dude, that's five, three. Right. Yeah. Uh, but. <laughs> I think it would be really cool if they start to weave in some of, you know, like Agent 13's in Madripoor. Are we going to see any of that? Like all these things that they've been building since Endgame, are we going to get any of that in here? Are they going to answer any questions or is this just going to be a fun standalone Deadpool saves the multiverse, the end? No, I, I really don't think this is just going to be one of those funny throwaway movies. I think this is perhaps going to be one of the most important movies that we're going to get out of this next series of mcu films that bleed into this multiverse saga they're building right i truly believe that like obviously phase four 
people kind of like they haven't done anything with like shang chi yet and a lot of the characters that they've introduced blade stuck in developmental hell uh yeah we're getting the fantastic four which is going to be set in the 60s uh, i think they're going to somehow fold into the modern day they're going to get trapped somewhere but i really truly believe maybe that from Deadpool onslaught is going to i don't know i mean I yeah too far. yeah <laughs> i mean that that's very no no i i, I truly think that we're on like you're honest i don't think this is just a throwaway movie I think they're going to use Hugh Jackman's return and Ryan Reynolds as a jumping point to launch because, you know, they're right now they're kind of stuck, right? Uh, the Kang saga clearly isn't working out because of everything with Jonathan majors. Uh, so I really think that, Hey, we're back on track. Now we've, we've pulled back on all the MCU movies. We've reshot some, we've rewritten some, all the shows, even we're slowing things down. Boom, we're going to launch this movie this year, and I think they're going to fold a lot of stuff in. It's going to be way more important than I think people – yeah, it's going to be funny, but I think it's going to be way more important than people think that it's going to be. I love that. I also wonder, like, with it being the TVA, is this before the Loki thing with the TVA? Is this after? So I feel like that's a big thing. I, I wish with all these movies now they would just tell us where they are in the timeline. Like, where are you? What multiverse are you in? Just to – to help us all because i feel like I... the last few years we've been struggling with like Good did this question. take place before that or that before this and they released the the book maybe i need to get the book but well we had some technical difficulties but we pretty much wrapped up everything we wanted to say about deadpool as the movie's getting ready to release in a couple weeks follow us on social media because laura and i are headed to europe where we are going to be on a Disney cruise like we've been talking about. It's finally here. We're going to be in Barcelona and then stop in some other spots. And then we are going to watch the movie in, you know, London, England, which is pretty exciting. Let us know what we might have missed with Deadpool 1 and 2, maybe some theories that you guys had. And as always, follow us, Hops Geek News, any podcasting platform, any social media platform. Man, so excited for this movie. And thank you, guys. Stay tuned as we have some really cool creative interviews coming up this week next week we're gonna be talking about the wolverine timeline and then we have our patch and other deadpool slash wolverine fox universe characters that might appear in the deadpool film and uh we're just doing a lot of really cool stuff so thank you guys for hanging out we will see you guys next time cheers Content you are listening to is part of the Nerd Initiative Podcast Network. For more info about the home of pop culture positivity, check out nerdinitiative.com.